Hi, this is Pablo Lewin, WA6RSV, and today we have a fantastic guest who's going to help me with the program of its creation, Ted Klein, N0RQV, and you're Denver, Colorado, right? Are you oh, about an hour north, up uh, near a town called Loveland. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're up in the mountains. No, that's to the west. That's the ski area. I'm oh, okay. I'm named after the same guy, uh, a railroad engineer long ago. But we have a town all the way up here near Fort Collins. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was thinking west. I don't know why north. Uh, I don't know. I was trying to wake up. But uh, so you created a program called EZRA, which I uh, wanted to tell us a little bit about it and see if we can install it in my old uh, radio telescope computer. Sounds great. Uh, I thought there was a need uh, to f formalize what I was playing around with, uh, capturing data uh, or radio signals coming down at 1420 megahertz from the sky above, uh, from all that galactic hydrogen transmitting up there. Um, and how do you picture it? How do you make the signal stronger? How do you analyze it and display it? And so uh, I never stopped. I just kept putting, adding plots and plots and plots. Uh, if you can understand all the plots and just de describe what's going on, then you learn a lot. Um, I, I think of it as a bunch of tools on a PC uh, to do the work we want to do. They have a lot of switches and knobs to turn and adjust, but they also have a lot of defaults. So just run them as is, and then um, look at the help screens and try to uh, enhance it. And I understand that this is a Python program, but it only it not only works on Linux, but it also works. It might work on a Windows machine. Well, I try to make it work on Windows. Yeah. Uh, both environments have their exciting parts. And so we're going to find out today if we really can. Uh, Windows works for me and Linux works for me. Uh, I have lots of files up on the web, all in one archive. And in there are instructions for both of those operating systems. It works for me. Let's see if it works for you. Otherwise, help me improve the product. OK, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and share now. Let me find out to share share my screen, and I'm going to introduce my little computer, which is about uh, 150 feet behind me. So we're going to access it uh, uh, remotely using uh, Splashtop, uh, which is what I'm doing right now. And uh, this is a very uh, old machine. It's the poor CPU is working at 70%. Uh, I have a 2.1 meter uh, dish, uh, which is uh, now pointed uh, straight up to Zenith, and uh, it's now receiving uh, a signal from the uh, hydrogen line uh, by using uh, the AirSpy uh, software and uh, an RTL SDR as a receiver. And uh, I also have two LNAs in series uh, to allow me to get at uh, minus 25 dB, which is uh, a lot of power. So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this, I suppose, right? And then with your program, it's going to take uh, over this portion of the uh, uh, receiver? Uh, what you have is uh, an extension added to that SDR program or SDR sharp program as a receiver. And it uh, provides that pretty picture on the left with the bumps and even some spikes there. Uh, and that's great. Uh, there is a way to fill in the fields and actually have it save that information to files. Uh, each one of those spectrums gets written to one little file with lots of numbers. And uh, it'll write up to a thousand of those and then finally time out. So uh, if I understand this correctly, we're still going to be using this uh, program. Well, uh, you can. If you have a bunch of data in this format, uh, there is a way to convert it into my Ezra format, EZRA format, um, and you can use that as well. So don't throw away your data, but I'm, I'm trying to get another method uh, that doesn't use SDR Sharp. Uh, 
Okay, I, that's exactly what I want because I don't have a lot of data uh, left uh, from that uh, from this program. So I'd like to start from scratch and only use your program to control the receiver and the L LNAs and to gather all the information. So is that's what we're going to do today? Sounds great. Yep, that is very possible. Okay, in preparations, I uh, downloaded and installed Python uh, 3.11, whatever, the latest one. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this off. Is that, is that okay, basically? Uh, you're welcome to turn it off uh, and actually use the screen for something else. Uh, I actually had trouble with Python 3.11. Oh. It is so new, I think some of the libraries that we're going to need have not yet caught up to it. So I actually used, uh, wrote up my instructions using Python 3.10 and whatever little digits come after that. Okay. Uh, 3.10. So, so uh, we could explore or we could do something that has at least worked for me. Uh, by the time you folks see this video, 3.11 may be working just fine. Um, so what do you recommend? Should I uninstall this uh, Python? And install the three point uh, the the one that works. I think that's what would be required. Okay. Otherwise, we have to get into fancy Python things of choosing the correct Python, um, and I think that's more complicated. Okay. Um, inside that blue little Ezra directory, not not the picture, but up above. Not, well, not even there. Uh, down below, there's a list above license, says Ezra. Let's click on that. And we go into a whole directory of stuff. If we scroll down, we can see a bunch of files. One of those starts with Ezra 20 and the letter B, Windows install. This is simply the PDF that I'm walking through with us here today. You're welcome to go fetch it and uh, read all about it. Uh, GitHub will display a PDF file, but if you scroll down, you'll see that it only, keep going down, you'll see that it uh, says, I'm not wasting my time on a big long PDF. I'm only going to give you the first couple of pages. So if you wish to, you can click on more pages, go ahead, and then you get to see more. But uh, for long things, uh, it's just trying to save bandwidth on the web. I think that's fine. And this is what I'm walking through. We'll see how far we get down here. It gets exciting now. Uh, okay, so my instructions there on the web inside Ezra uh, talk about uh, how to go get all this good stuff and set up a couple of directories. Let's, uh, let's go to there. Uh, overview, repositories, projects, packages, where? Overview. I want you to click not on my face, but on Ezra. It says, I'm interested in Ezra. That's one place. Very good. There it is with a whole bunch of instructions uh, or introduction text as, as you read down. But we care about the green button in the top right. Oh. If you click on the green code button, down at the bottom it says download zip. And now we are downloading about 30 megabytes of stuff. Most of it is PDF files of me trying to explain how to use this thing. The Python code isn't very big. I think we're there. Um, what we can, uh, let me walk through a little bit more. Let's go back to Windows. Uh, where would you like to put a directory for all this stuff? Uh, desktop, it's always good to find. If you wish, sounds great. Uh, I put it under documents, I don't really care. But let's start here in de desktop and create a new folder. I'm suggesting the word Ezra base. You got to spell Ezra the correct way. Easy. Uh, anyway, you can spell it. This word can be anything you want. I always do Ezra with two small letters and then R-A. And then I have a capital B and then ACE. Ezra base. Oh, uh, because of Linux, uh, I always put it uh, with no spaces. On Windows, that's not such a big deal. Well, actually, on Windows, it's kind of an awkward Oh, I'm going to do this verbatim. That looks very good to me. Let's go inside there. Double click. Let's set up another directory. 
new directory. And this one's called be called demo one, five characters, demo one, all small, whatever you want. I don't think I actually ever refer to it. We just click into it. That looks perfect. Uh, we're going to stop right there. Now we can go to that GitHub repository of software where we just were. Oh, and in fact, and download the stuff. The download the stuff one. Talk about. And you've done that already, which is great. In your downloads directory, you should have an Ezra minus master dot zip. Let's Correct. just double click on that. We don't even have to unpack it. Double click on the thing inside it. And let's go copy and paste that whole Ezra directory. Just a directory or the license and readme? Just the Ezra directory. And go put it in that Ezra base that you made up. Okay, yep, that would do. And now we can go click inside Ezra base and take a look. Now we have two directories right next to each other. That's the exciting part. Ezra is on your machine. Now, the problem is Ezra requires a whole bunch of stuff to make it go, like Python. And then there are more libraries of other software that we're going to download to make it go. Okay. Um, Foyer transforms and all kinds of stuff, probably. Uh, and so we begin. So we um, do, you, do you want me to install Python at this point or? Yes. Uh, well, hang on. Let me see what my directions actually say. Let's yeah. do it the right way. Oh, you're direct. Uh, well, let's get set up a little bit more if we can. Of course. Um, let's uh, go into the demo directory. Double click. And I want a command prompt in this place. I suggest you put your cursor way up next to demo one up at the top, but off in the white space to the right. And now you replace that whole word with three characters. CMD. Um, click once, please. No, oh, no. Click We're going to replace oh, all that with CMD. Got it. No, the whole thing. Yep. Okay. Fire. That brings up a command prompt using uh, already looking at this directory. Okay. There are other ways to do this. You can pull up a, uh, this command prompt anytime you want, and you can CD or change directory around to different places and finally get here. Uh, this seems like to be an easy method. But that screen is too small. I want you to uh, hold down the Windows key and push the up arrow key on your keyboard, and that should make it big. That's good. But my gosh, those characters are so small. If we go up near uh, the top command, uh, the, the title bar, and I think do a right click, we can look at properties. And we can change the font size. There's a tab up above. Font up above. Oh, there you go. And you can make it not 16, but maybe uh, 24. OK. Let's see what fits. OK. Well, that's more readable. Um, wow. Great. Let's, let's, do, Windows. let's do a couple more things here. Sure. Um, if you type DIR, what happens? And enter, of course. We get a listing of all the files. But you know, we just made this directory. There are no files here. Although it does list something called a directory, which is period, and another directory, which is period, period. Uh, the period refers to all the files in this current directory. And dot, dot, or period, period, refers to the directory that where we came from, above us. We know it's called Ezra Base. Okay. Uh, type in help, please. Uh, and hit enter. Oh my gosh, there are a whole bunch of other new commands. If you use your mouse wheel, you can roll up and down and see all these things. And you're welcome to read them to your heart's content. 
maybe you want to find out more about the dir command uh let's go down to the bottom or start typing i think we'll get there let's type help space dir oh my gosh now you can learn all about the dir command this way now you're dangerous go get them uh let's try and see if python shows up let's type in well, we haven't py. installed it we haven't installed it yet well let's find out oh, py okay. for python space oh and then minus minus version all one word like this yep what happens it says i never heard of it i don't know what python is now we know what we need to do. Uh, you have already downloaded Python. Uh, I think I need at least Python 3.6. You have Python 3.10. We were discussing a little earlier how I had trouble making 3.11 work. Uh, I think it, some software needs to catch up and to the 3.11 version. Let's uh, double click on 3.10 right there. You downloaded the 64-bit version. And here we go. Now stop. Uh, yeah. I want to click Add Python Path Exec to Path at the bottom. And then I'd like to go to Custom Installation, please. Uh, all those things are checked. I think that's great. Um, high Launcher. Uh, other folks may want to actually to click one more box in there. It talks about for all users. Uh, it's grayed maybe, out. Maybe we don't have admin privileges right now, and so that's not allowed. But uh, I think this will be good enough for us. Let's find out. Next, I want to install Python 3.10 for all users, so click that top box. Suddenly, one of the lower boxes gets clicked because uh, they thought you wanted it. Uh, the pre pre-compile standard library and so okay i guess and i leave the two boxes at the bottom unchecked just as they are i'm ready for you to hit install all righty things happen youtube uh it gave all right, so finally we got to set up was successful. That's a good sign. Now, down at the bottom, you may or may not see that blue paragraph talking about disable path length limit. If your program or an earlier application changed it, then you won't see it. Luckily here, we have an example where it hasn't been changed. I want you to click on that lower blue thing and disable the path length limit. Hit it. It doesn't take long. It's just a setting in the, oh uh, gosh, what is it? Uh, where all those little tokens are recorded. Uh, it, it makes a small change. There are other ways you can do it without Python, of course. But this was really easy. So let's do yeah. that. Uh, what happens is we have so many software programs on our PCs that the one line they gave us isn't long enough to include them all. Now you've disabled that limit, and we've kind of gone modern, which is good. Uh, we can close this now. Python is installed. Let's go back to that black window if we can and see, see that same command. Uh, if you go up arrow on your keyboard, you can save yourself some typing. <laughs> Hit Enter. Ooh, now it talks about Python 3.10.8. Now we're cooking. Uh, that's good news. Let's do another command very similar. This time it's PIP pip space minus minus version. The two minuses actually are required. Hit it. All right. Pip is not there. Somehow we didn't get a chance to install pip. That's awkward. We're going to do it a different way. Um, I've often seen pip installed automatically when we put in Python. We may have missed a switch. Let's carry on and see if we can do it without it. There's okay. another method as well. Uh, 
Now let's go try something fancy. Let's go run a, one of the Ezra programs that you already installed. We type in PY again, space. Oh, right here. Um, under command. Place. Yep. A lot of this is command line because I can convey it so much easier. Space, space, or space anyway. Uh, what I was working up to was period, period. Okay, so Windows, PY, period, period. Well, no, I needed that one space in there, please. Python is the command space. It's going to call on something, which is in period, period. We learned earlier that that means up one directory, backslash in Windows. Well, that's a forward slash to me. That one. Uh, Ezra, I think in Windows, capitalization doesn't matter, but I've always tried to have it easy RA, like radio astronomy. So I, I spell it this way. Backslash. And one of the programs is called EZ C O N for concentrate dot PY. It is a Python program, so it ends in PY. And that's the name of the program, and that's where it is up one directory and over in the Ezra directory, because we are standing in the demo one directory from our earlier commands. Let's hit enter, see what happens. Great. Uh, that was an error I was expecting. It says, I'm running the program. One of your commands says to load this thing called Seaborn, but I don't see it around here. So we have to go install it. Good. And so what we need is Seaborn. We got to go install it. If we had pip, we could use pip to install Seaborn, like it says in the instructions, or we can use Python. Let's try the second method. Let's type py space minus m space. There's that word pip, p-y-p-i-p, please. Space, the word install. space and now the word seaborn you see it up above you s-e-a-b-o-r-n that looks good to me let's hit enter oh my gosh it's downloading all kinds of things okay oh, seaborn panda numpy cycler all kinds of stuff that's why i put it in the program first so it's you don't have to do each one. It pulls in a whole bunch with it. Fantastic. These are libraries that Python will call upon to make real pretty graphs. The colorful heat maps use Seaborn library. Okay. Uh, in Python, I guess these are called modules as opposed to libraries. Oh. Every world always has its different words. There is a caution in there talking about uh, f2py.exe. That has something to do with installing fonts and putting them into Python. I just don't care. Okay. It's still thinking away. Taking its time. Yeah, I think this uh, video is going to be very useful to uh, uh, users like me who are not too Python savvy. What we probably should do is insert in the front of it where you can get all these instructions I keep referring to. All right, we finally got back to a command prompt. Uh, it seems pretty happy about what it did. It's saying that, yeah, your PIP is out of date. That seems to be always the case. So you could upgrade it with that fancy command. But uh, let's carry on with what we have now. Okay. Uh, if we ran that, uh, if we go up arrow on the keyboard, that command would now complain about another thing missing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Another up arrow, if you would, where we actually run EasyCon. Uh, that command there would complain about another library missing. So we might as well go install it right now. Let's go down arrow once and change the word Seaborn to Astro 
with PY on the end. Astro, no, I need an O. Astro, Pi. Hit enter. This is a library that does a whole bunch of math for us and changes from one coordinate system to another. Uh, it, I might be using it also for time. Um, it's lots of math. And you created all these programs? Yourself? No, these libraries uh, are standard. That's why I'm having trouble on Python 3.11 that somehow they're just not caught up yet. Uh, I think it's AstroPy or maybe the next one fails on 3.11 uh, at least about two weeks ago. By the time you folks see this video, it may be all happy. All right, let's do an, one up arrow on the keyboard and replace that last word AstroPy with one more word. This is SciencePy, S-C-I. Nope, nope. Just three letters. PY. Hit it. And I use this for a bunch of other library purposes. And it goes off and gathers a bunch of information and stores it away in the right places. Those are the three I think I care about. We're going to find out. And it's good that I'm making all these little errors because people are going to see that uh, they can. Yeah, you're human. I'm a human being that uh, I'm not very savvy. Uh, uh, and if I can do it, if I can uh, do this, everybody will be able to do it. That's what I'm thinking. And now we have uh, SciPy in there. So we installed three different libraries to get this far. Um, there may be a couple more later on if we need it. We'll see. Uh, let's go up arrow, up arrow again. Up arrow again, up arrow one more time. And here we are at that easy con program. I'm just trying to save you from all that typing. Excellent. Run this one, hit enter. And let's see what happens now. This will depend on your program or your installation of what you have. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, in my instructions, I talk about another error that showed up on a very clean uh, Windows PC. Uh, there are Windows libraries that sometimes are needed. These are runtime libraries that uh, apparently, uh, Pablo, you installed with some other application somewhere in the past. And so the system is now happy uh, and running the Ezra program. But other folks may have to follow the instructions on uh, in my PDF there and go out and get Visual, uh, I'm sorry, Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable packages for Visual Studio and a whole bunch of dates. And there's a big long link and you install the 25 megabyte file. Uh, and Microsoft knows where, uh, I'll say, knows where to put it. All right, so now you actually got it going. Um, at the very bottom, there's an ad, the Society of Amateur Radio Astronomers that Pablo and I are members of with a web page. So a free ad shows that uh, the program went all the way to the end and stopped. That's good. Uh, if you uh, already have data and don't need to collect any more, Ezra is fully installed, I think. Um, and the other programs will work just fine. Let's give them a quick run as well. Up arrow once, please. And change EasyCon now to Easy Plot with a PY. Easy P L O T. We're going to plot some things. And it is a Python program, so we need period PY on the end. And nothing after it will bring up the help screen, I hope. Fire. There it is. There's a whole bunch of stuff. If you scroll up, you can see the help screen for our friends uh, on the mouse 
scroll up. Okay, yeah. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of text and stuff and talk about instructions and different things even lower down. There are different options. Um, this changes from time to time. At the very bottom, just above that ad, is the revision of the program. I can see this is easy plot from the year 2022 in the month 11. So that's November. The day is 23. And I got only one version called A on that day. So uh, this will improve as the program improves as well. Let's go check another one uh, instead of the word plot. Let's change that to sky, like the blue sky above us. Easy sky. Easy sky plots things against the radio sky. Apparently, it has all the libraries it needs uh, and prints out the help screen just fine. Uh, normally, you would follow it by a bunch of data or something to go gather. But since we didn't, the program says this guy doesn't know how to control anything. I better give it the help screen so uh, we can explore together. And there's one more program. This up arrow and change sky now for the word G A L, like the beginning of galaxy. Dot P Y. It has to pull in things. And we got, uh, it says, I, you obviously need to give me some data. So I'll give you the help screen and you can figure it out yourself. I don't have um, any data on this computer. Um, that's right. And uh, we're about to go make some, I think, is the plan. Right. But at the bottom, we can see the ad. And so apparently the program finished all the way to the end and was happy. Uh, that proves that the libraries that we would need to use this are now installed. The AstroPy, the SciPy, like science. And the first one was Seaborn, a plotting uh, library. That's so pretty good. That we've been doing so far. It's just to check that all the uh, the installation is correct, and we have all the libraries that we need. Exactly the... so. Uh, these couple of commands, without any parameters following it, no arguments, uh, will bring up the help screen, and that's good enough for us uh, to just to show this. If we had data, we could do all that. Um, but as you say, there's no data right now. So let's install one more program with what it needs to go collect data. Collect. That starts with COL. So we're going to try to install easy COL's requirements. Okay. Uh, it had another one of those libraries it needs having to do with talking to the RTL SDR receiver, the dongle that plugs into the PC through the USB port. So if you can go up arrow back to one of those installs, there we are. Let's change SciPy with PY RTL. Nope, spelled a different way. RTL SDR. That is one of the libraries we need. Hit enter. Somehow there's a re repository out there on the web and uh, your system was able to find it. Great. Otherwise, I give a link to show you actually where it is on the web. The next one now gets it more exciting. The library we just installed calls a lower library. Uh, probably written in C and such like that. And so we need to go fetch it, just like we did for Python. Um, <laughs> we now have to go up to the top line where it says Ted Klein slash Ezra. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to replace Ted Klein and go to another thing stored on GitHub. I didn't do it, so it has nothing to do with me. Let's type in L-I-B... There it is. I found it in my notes. LIB for library and RTL SDR slash the same thing again. LIB 
RTL spelling, still spelling, RTL SDR. Uh, and hit enter, please. Someone else put a bunch of code to control these different radio dongles. Um, and in the top right, you can see a green button. We don't click on it. It's just a landmark. Yeah. To the right of that, we see the word about. The next paragraph down is about releases. Way down below, there we are. And off to the right, it talks about the latest. Uh, the one that's actually shown here seemed to work for me. L LIB RTL SDR version 0 0.8. But let's click on that link right as you see it the, in the, on the name. Go ahead. And um, here's the releases. I'm sure there are other releases. There may be newer releases by your time. Uh, we need to simply pick the right file from the list below. If you'll scroll up a little bit, we can look them over. Uh, there are a whole bunch of zip files in here. We care about one that talks about, um, we, we don't want a statically linked library. So the words that have static are no good to me us. We want a DLL and your system is a 64 bit system, Pablo. And so we're looking for something that probably ends with W64 DLL. Um, we don't want the user data gram protocol UDP server. So we're going to avoid all that UDP server words. And we're left with the one that your cursor is near, W64 DLL. Uh, do I want the, yes, and I want the depth. So if you'll click on that file, that's useful to you and your system. It gets downloaded to your download directory, just like before. Now, if we go look at it, let's see, you could, let's go over to the file manager because we're going to be in there for a little bit. We're going to steal one file out of this and go put it in a magic spot. Uh, in fact, let's find the magic spot. Uh, let's go to the command prompt uh, black window. Uh, and, and let's do an up arrow to run this command again. Uh, earlier, we typed in echo path, hit enter. We actually had to run a new version of command prompt to get it updated so it knows about this. And on the left-hand side of that first paragraph, that long paragraph, we can see it talks about program files and Python 3.10 scripts. Uh, and the next directory in this long list of directories is program files Python 3.10. This is simply a list of directories where to look for all these commands you type into this command prompt. Uh, the second one is what we care about, program files, Python 3.10. Uh, can you put your cursor up there to help? There we are. That's the one we're talking about. Uh, now we know where we want to put it. Let's go get the file and copy it into that place. Okay. You're welcome to enhance your path and put it in a different directory as long as it's in one of these directories somewhere that's listed in this path, that's good enough for me. Now we go back to the file manager. To our downloads directory, you've already, uh, let's actually back up. I think we have a different file. Uh, yeah, the one that ends in DLL dep. That's the, inside there, there's a file at the top called lib rtl sdr.dll. Here's another library for Windows that uh, Python calls a library which calls this. Copy this file, control C. Uh, and now we go over to, I guess, Windows C colon down near the bottom of your list on the left. Uh, and we were in program files, about the third one down, double click. 
I don't think the X84 was mentioned. I think the one above it, please. Uh, okay. It said just program files. And then Python 3.10 is halfway down. Double click on there. In that directory, if you just click on one of those to tell it where to go instead of a directory, not, not there. I would just put next to Python. Then you can find it later instead of hiding it down deep. So click on the runtime for me or just hit paste. Oh, That's fine. I, I usually just click on a, a, a sister directory, a sister file to make sure it doesn't go down into some subdirectory. Hit enter or continue. Here comes that file, and sure enough, it shows up just where I want it. Okay. It's now in the directory, the second one that was listed by that command that showed you the, the long path, the list of directories where it will go searching. Now it can find this file if it ever wants to. This is a good step. Okay. After this, we got to worry about, um, there's another place where we can get that file too. Now we can go way back to the command prompt and try a new command. There's yet another program. There we are. Um, much like before, we type in py space period, period, meaning go up one directory, slash. No, that's, that's not the um, I think it's backslash here in Windows. Or, or maybe it won't matter. I'm a fuzzy on that part. And then we type in Ezra, two small letters, two capital letters. If it matters on Windows, I think it doesn't. Another backslash. And the actual program name is called Easy Call, Call for Collect, Easy C O L. Dot py. And we'll uh, see what happens. My program is running. This looks good. Oh, and it found a tuner. I see down near the bottom it says found Raphael Micro something tuner. Things are flashing. Something called figure one pops up. We typed it in before. I couldn't find it. Up arrow, if you would. That looks great. Fire. This is pretty much the same program. It just split up into kind of two loops. Mm -hmm. We're going to see if this makes any difference. It will take some time, a little bit, to grind it out. And we'll see if it's any better. I think we got this before. Hey, oh, there here we go. go. Hey. All right, now double click on the title bar to make it big. Yeah. Double um, click. I know. Uh, okay. Click that box then. Make, just make max. Well, I don't know. Maximize it. Just that was the way we can see everything. There you go. All right. Suddenly it is much more responsive to you. Yeah. Uh, you are seeing the current spectrum. You can see parts of that if you wish. I see a little bit of hydrogen in the middle. Uh, I see a heck of a RFI spike on the right. I don't care. Um, it's interesting that it went away. And uh, that RFI spike. Um, but this is the live thing. On the bottom ones, you can see that it's growing from the right. So the time still. Increases. Oh, this is the live one. Okay. This is live. This is the way it's supposed to work. Oh, I like it. And I think we just had a, a resource. You know here. what? You know what? I can do a, a, a screen grabs to make a movie out of this. Yeah, you could. You could plot it later if you wish. So, yeah, um, all these things are possible. But now it's working for you. Now, over on the right-hand side, you see how it started all those plots really high? Yeah. And then it went low? That's because the receiver warmed up. Way up in the top right, I want you to click on New File. Click on it. Click on it. It is a button. 
all those gray things and stuff are buttons. It will suddenly erase everything and start a new file. It has. The new file has a B on the end of it. I can see it in the middle of that text, a little bit to the lower and left from where you are. I see MLO 2212.05.00 because it just passed the UTC witching hour. And we were on 00.txt, but you asked for a new file. It didn't want to step on the old one, so it put a letter B on the end. Fascinating. Okay. That's fine. And you're up to sample four. And now the graph on the right looks a little bit better. Where do you see sample four? Just uh, now it's up to sample five, just to the right of your cursor. Right there? Oh, right here. Okay. Yep. Six. Oh, this is, oh, this so is a new, the two things are now finally working. The two, I'm gonna, uh, you'll see what I'll do with this. You're welcome to. Um, um, I, I think it might be educational. I'm not sure it helps in data, but it, it teaches people what's going no, on. No, I'm not even going to, I, I don't even, you, you were right. I don't have to, I don't have to use the, uh, 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 the plugin anymore because this I can do. In fact, I'll do it right now. Well, now we have a quick way that you could really show hydrogen, but uh, your antenna is probably good enough. 